so pretty much, I just like to conclude by saying um, that sometimes the regular tactics don't work, um, and it is important to have a youth vote. Um, and so sometimes you have to go out and activate that youth vote and don't just expect them to come to the town hall. Um, and I think that's sort of what we did. We had a very successful campaign in November, um, and we ended up electing a new Victoria candidate who promised <coughs> to close down Vermont Yankee and replace it with clean energy. Um, so we were indeed successful. Thanks. Next, we have another American youth, um, Carrie Fulton, who is a founding member of an organization called Youth for Climate Justice, which is a network of US youth leaders and organizers who work to amplify the voice uh, and issues of frontline communities impacted by environmental toxins and climate change. And she's going to come up and talk to us a little bit about the importance and the ways that youth groups in the US are actively working. So thanks, Carrie. Hello. I feel like you. I'm also short, <laughs> and that's why we're big here. Um, but um, as she mentioned graciously, my name is Carrie Fulton. I'm the national campaign coordinator for the Environmental Justice and Climate Change Initiative. Um, we're a member of the Energy Action Coalition, which is an organization that mobilizes youth in not only the U.S., but also in Canada around clean energy. Um, recently, within the last year, I'm also the co-founder of a web platform called checktheweather.net, where we hope to redefine going green by amplifying the voice of young people of color as well as Youth for Climate Justice, which is a network of United States-based organizations and youth organizers who are working in their communities to fight for not only climate justice, but also for environmental justice and economic justice. So this is a picture from COP15 in Copenhagen. And I took this picture because it represented a diaspora within our world. It represented so many different cultures, so many different traditions, all in one room. And similar to that picture, that's what the US looks like. Unlike some other countries, we have a lot, a lot of diversity, and even diversity within that diversity. So if you go to the next slide, you can see some of that diversity within the organizing work that we do as part of Energy Action Coalition. Right here, as you can see, we have so many different people. The Youth for Climate Justice, we focus on that deep connection between where we are today in America and our friends, allies, relatives, ancestors that come specifically from the global south and from developing countries. As you can see with this, we had to, it's a lot of conversations that happen. So every city in America is not Vermont, unfortunately. So <laughs> Vermont is a very, very progressive city that realized that, yo, we have a problem. We need to increase our recycling. We need to increase our investments in clean energy technology. And we need to increase our ability to get off of dirty energy. Unfortunately, that is not always the case across America. This is a picture from my home city that I live in, Washington, DC. This is Minnesota Avenue. Uh, subway station and this is a train that goes by there every day actually they just sit there and it's a uh, transporting coal and right around there in that same neighborhood you also have uh, a oil refinery a, a peaking plant and you have a lot of different industry this is one of the poorest neighborhoods in Washington DC it's 98 percent african-american and and it's a lot of issues, but I also took that because in Minnesota, where we partner with indigenous groups, they face a lot of the same issues, where you have coal, where you have issues with indigenous rights. So just that connection within that picture. So even though we don't always see alike, right? We have these issues that are so close to home that stop the United States from moving and mobilizing in a way that the international world would like to see us move. 
And oftentimes, um, just to give an example, I, I went to an event that POC Japan African Climate Justice Alliance held, and the chair of the African group said, I've given up on America. And that, for me, is like, well, I don't necessarily sometimes feel like I'm an American because technically my ancestors did not come there on purpose. But at the same time, I know that because I'm still there, I still have a responsibility to my global uh, family. One of the things about those share fights are climate deniers. Why can't the US pass a climate bill? Well, we have a whole bunch of people who don't believe that climate change is real. So we are fighting that battle as young people, as, as environmental activists, to really boost up that conversation and showcase to them that yes, climate change is real. And oftentimes it takes having natural disasters happen in your own home land before you realize the impacts of climate change. And I truly hope that we don't have to have another Hurricane Katrina to see that happen within the United States. False solutions. Some people might have gotten this. And this is something that Grassroots Global Justice and Grassroots Solutions North America are putting out. And we are a member as Youth for Climate Justice. Within even the larger youth movement, there's so many different ways that people want to solve, quote unquote, or reduce the impacts of climate change. And some of those solutions may actually be more harmful for our communities than the problems that we're already dealing with. One of the big issues that we're looking at is the issue of red and red plus. Now a lot of people from the global south and from developing nations they want red, and that's okay, because there are financial implications and there are uh, ways of restoring our forests that might work through this scheme. However, what we often see with carbon offsetting is that that same oil refinery or coal plant that's in the United States, they can go and plant a tree in Brazil and then that will keep them from reducing emissions right at home. And so our communities right in home, right in Washington DC, the capital of the United States of America, still have to deal with pollution. And that's called pollution hotspots. And that's an issue that we're trying to bring not only to our global allies, but also to our United States allies. That if we're going to truly save our future, we have to deal with real solutions that are real solutions for everyone, for all impacted communities. There is a global south of the global north, and those are the people who are most impacted by climate change and by environmental hazards. And those global south are people, not necessarily just in the southern regions of America, but across America, who have deep connections to the global south and who face racism, discrimination, and a disproportionate uh, impact by environmental hazards that are placed in our communities because similar to youth, they, they assume we don't vote. We're disenfranchised, so who cares about your issues? And if you don't vote, then you won't care if we put another coal plant or another polluting industry in your backyard. But the beautiful thing about America is that our opinions can be voiced. Sometimes we take that for granted that for the most part, you're not gonna go to jail for telling the government that you don't like what they're doing. And a part of this is showcased in Power Shift. Power Shift is the first ever youth climate summits on environment in the United States, on climate specifically. And this is a picture from Power Shift 09, which was the largest in the US. We had 12,000 young people from across the US and Canada come out. And we also lobbied our governors, and not our governors, our Congress people and our senators, and we told them this is what the youth wanna see. This is what we wanna see so we can be there in 2050. And that little boy that's 11 years old now, maybe he can really be mayor by the time he's 51. And so that's just a little bit about what we do specifically. 
but you can also check any of these websites to get more information about what we're doing in the United States, about the diversity of issues and causes, and to learn more about why grassroots organizations are saying no to false solutions, including Red Plus. Thank you. that a lot of us are, are discussing and taking a stand against. Um, maintenant, nous avons une présentation euh, collaborative entre deux de mes collègues euh, sur la délégation de la jeunesse canadienne. Uh, two of my Canadian youth delegate colleagues are now going to present on some of the effects um, and solutions to climate change that we are seeing uh, come up in Canada. So we've got uh, Mal Malcolm Boothroyd, who just uh, biked down here, essentially, from the Yukon. He actually biked to Washington, D.C., and then took sustainable ground transportation all the way down to Cancun. So he's been traveling to the COP since August. And <laughs> Um, who is a fellow uh, French Canadian, and she is currently studying bioresource engineering at McGill University. So, Malcolm, okay. All right, I think I just, I think I just finished writing up what I have to say, and it, it, it always. Uh, uh, it's hard to go right after uh, a, a really great speaker because you're going to seem uh, uh, not so good in comparison, but I'll try my best. Okay, so, so if you help me to just like, uh, my name is my name is Malcolm Boothroyd, and I'm an 18-year-old.